Uh, good morning, everyone. So today I'm very excited to talk about this topic. What is happening to the retail industries in the United States? So these uh, pictures on the front page represent the major retailers in the United States and their re respective uh, sectors. Um, so as you can guess, you know, the sectors on the left are not doing quite well, and the sectors on the right, they are doing pretty well, especially Amazon, okay, this is a superstar. So at the end, we are gonna talk about the recent expansion plan uh, for Amazon, right? So first of all, let me give you a big picture of uh, retail employment uh, growth over the past decade, several decades. So this is the payroll employment um, since 19. 39, okay, so the red line. As you can see, uh, in the most of the post-war period, we, we will see this kind of continuous steady growth of the retail employment growth until 2001 recession. Okay, since then, we see kind of much lower growth trend. So from 2007 to 2016, this almost 10 year period, we only see 2% uh, employment growth. That's like 0.2% per year. And as David just said, over the past year, we see the negative 0.2% growth. Yeah. So we probably know, so right now the disruptive force by technology and online shopping is getting more and more powerful. So right now I'm gonna show you another sector which was the first and most serious impact uh, in the post-war period by technology. That is manufacturing, yeah, boom one. So as you can see, there's no other sector like manufacturing, which is so devastated by technology. So you can see here, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, basically when our economy was growing, population was growing, but the manufacturing employment basically plateau. There's the same kind of fluctuation with business cycle, and then 2001 recession, we see the beginning of the collapse of the manufacturing sectors. So since then, over the past two decades, we lost six million good paying middle class jobs in manufacturing. So right now the question is, will retail become the next manufacturing sector in terms of employment? So uh, later on in the second half, our uh, panel will, uh, and David will discuss this in much more detail. So uh, my personal take is we are gonna see some kind of fluctuation and plateau um, uh, over the next several decades. So the big question is when will we see the technology give the retail uh, the final blow and we are going to see this kind of collapse like they did uh, in 2001 in manufacturing. All right. So right now, uh, I'm gonna show you the retail subsector employment growth rate uh, from 2007 to 2016. As you, as you can see, we got very uneven growth across sectors, all right? On the top, super centers, they're doing very well. What is super center? Like Walmart, Target, uh, Costco. So uh, over the past decade, they have seen the 30% uh, employment growth rate and follow, of course, by the e-commerce online retailer, like Amazon. And then we can see grocery, gas station, health, personal care, auto dealer, and parts. They are still in the positive uh, territory. And then we go to the negative territory, like building supplies, uh, office supplies, and then things getting worse and worse, clothing, electronics, and then furniture department stores. Not so surprising. So right now, I'm gonna talk about this uh, total employment change during the same period. So the number one is still super center. So over the past decade, they produce, contribute 400 plus thousand uh, jobs, and then followed by grocery, and then e-commerce. And then all the way down, we see some kind of similar effect for clothing and department stores. Right. So, so right now, uh, there's a, a question here. So e-commerce is doing so well, but why they are contributing so little jobs? So to be fair, uh, some of the jobs they are 
creating are in other sector. We call it wholesale sector because the fulfillment uh, centers, they are in uh, different kind of sectors. But even so, we know the nature of online retailers is lean, is efficiency. So they can provide a low cost product to the customers. So it's very natural to see um, the job they are creating will not be able to fully compensate the job uh, from the brick and mortar uh, retailer they disrupt. Right. So right now, let's take a, a closer look over the past year when we see this total uh, retailer employment decline. So, uh, okay, e-commerce, online retailer is doing very well over the past year. So we probably get guess when they are doing well, it means the traditional retailer are not doing quite so. All right. And followed by auto dealer and power gas station, yeah, they are still doing pretty uh, well because of the auto boom, because of the low gasoline price. And then building supply, furniture, they are recovering, you know, in line with the housing market recovery. And then we go to the negative territory, all right, personal care, and super center and grocery. This is the most surprising things because the, the previous slide we just showed, they are the biggest contributor in terms of retail jobs. And right now, they are cutting jobs over the past year. So this is the major reason, major contributor. And then, again, we see this kind of uh, very miserable uh, situation still going on in department stores, you know, sports, book, hobby, and electronics um, stores. Right. So, um, so right now the question is, what is driving this kind of uh, disparity of uh, retail employments across sectors? So the obvious answer is retail sales. Right. So here, I show you the correlation. The vertical axis is the retail employment growth over the past year. And the horizontal axis is the nominal retail sales growth during the same period. As we can see, we see this kind of very strong positive correlation, right? So e-commerce is doing so well, so they hire, hire more workers. And unfortunately, they are very small sectors in terms of employment. And on the other hand, we had this uh, department store electronics, they are losing jobs, they are uh, uh, losing sales. But most surprising things is this part, okay? So these super center grocery stores, they are still gaining in terms of sales, but they are cutting jobs. Yeah, this is the most uh, surprising thing. So right now the technology is going to the Cooperation, the sector we are, which are still growing. So this is very alarming in terms of employment. All right. So um, we also seen there's a huge disparity of retail employment growth, sales growth across metro, across cities, uh, across the country. So why is that? So the obvious answer will be the cities local economic growth. Because when the city, when the metro with strong economic growth, strong employment growth, we will see more population, more purchasing, more consumption. So it's very straightforward. And so in here, I show you the correlation. So the vertical line is the retail employment growth over the past decade. And the horizontal line is the total employment growth of the metro over the past decade. Each dot represent a metro. So here we got like a 400 metros in the country. So again, we see this kind of very strong positive uh, correlation. All right, so for example here, we got Dallas, Houston, New York City, they are doing well uh, over the past decade in terms of a total economic growth, job growth, and so we are, uh, of course, uh, seeing this kind of high, strong retail growth. And here, this is Seattle. So uh, if you look at the uh, uh, chart closely, actually, um, uh, Seattle's total employment growth is about like 10%, 11%. But their retail growth, employment growth, is twice as much. So why is that? As you can guess, because the headquarters of Amazon is located in Seattle. So of course, we see that. And Los Angeles, okay. 
uh, we had low growth uh, during this period, so we had a very low uh, retail uh, employment growth. So San Francisco is here. So this is the most intriguing uh, example. So we probably know because of the high tech boom uh, over the past several years, we see very strong, more than 20% job growth in San Francisco metro. But surprisingly, we only see very little jobs growth in retail. So why is that? So one possible reason is we got a lot of tech nerds you know, in San Francisco. So they like Amazon shopping, online shopping. So it's very convenient for them. So we, had, we see the high uh, sales growth, but no need for employment growth. All right. Um, another thing I want to show you here, near next to Seattle, we see Orlando, Miami, this kind of cities in Florida. We notice that they had also kind of higher, much higher retail employment growth than the total economic growth. So why is that? So after some kind of regression you know, analysis, we find out, oh, the size of the tourist industry uh, in that metro also had a significant prediction power. Okay? Because we, all, we, we know over the past decade, tourism industry is doing very well. So the tourism, when, they, when we see more tourism, they not only increase the spending in hotel, in restaurant, they also do more retail, local shopping. So that is the reason. So right now, let's talk about uh, this uh, news. You probably heard of that. So Amazon announced they are gonna uh, uh, find a new location for their second headquarters. Okay, five billion investment, creating 50,000 jobs with $100,000 average in our salary. So I would say it's very good. It would be fantastic for Los Angeles to get uh, Amazon uh, second quarters uh, here. Okay, so we will see what will happen. But the search of Amazon's uh, second headquarters reinforce the forecast we just talked about. That what? The continued growth of Amazon's business as well as the e-commerce, online shopping in the future. But more importantly, I would like to talk about this issue. Amazon's uh, headquarters uh, they, they got this kind of, during their IFP, they talk about this requirement for this uh, whole city they are looking for. So I think this kind of requirement shows the characteristics of a successful city um, in the 21st century because it is directly, officially, publicly coming from uh, one of the most promising companies in the world. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So, the characteristic of a city in the future. So how ready is Los Angeles? Okay, so the number one requirement is this. Okay. More than one million population in the metro size. Okay, we know a small city, small metro, uh, doesn't have a sufficient amenities and infrastructure. So for Los Angeles, we got 10 million population. So check, all right. So number two, a stable, and business-friendly environment. So I will let you judge this. So <laughs> I make question mark. Okay, personally, I think there's still some room to improve. All right. Okay. Number three, attract and retain strong technical talents. Okay, there's several components in there. Okay, number one, human capital. Okay. Um, we talk about this human capital issue in Los Angeles in the past many, many times. So on average, we know Los Angeles is not good enough. We still need to improve our public education. Uh, but because Los Angeles is so big, so even one third of our population is sufficient enough to fulfill uh, 10 Amazon. So in terms of size, there's no problem. And not to mention, we got three first-rate universities in town. And then quality of life, all right? So they, there's no question, you know, we got a beautiful uh, beach, balmy weather. So in terms of natural amenity, almost there's no equal in this country to compete with Los Angeles. So these two check, right? And then affordable housing. So you just heard Jerry, right? So I would say probably no. <laughs> Actually, 
I, I, I believe, personally, I believe this is the major one major reason why Jeff Bezos want to move their headquarters outside Seattle. Because used to be Seattle home price is lower than Los Angeles. And this year, it surpassed Los Angeles. So Los Angeles, we got, uh, for example, uh, over the past year, we got 7% median home price growth. And Seattle is twice as much, 14%. So I think they don't want to turn Seattle into the next San Francisco. So that's why they want to kind of uh, be, uh, balance it out. Right. OK, and in their IFP, they also mentioned about specific requirement for their uh, headquarter location. Number one, they, told, they say it has to be within 30 miles to the population center. So we got population here everywhere, so there's no problem. <laughs> yeah. OK. Number two, 45 minutes to the international airport. OK. So the answer will say, depends on traffic, right? So that's, but OK, I, I would say west of downtown should be, should be able to make it. Right? So let's give you a yes. Within one to two miles to major highway. OK, that's no problem at all. Yeah. We got highway everywhere. OK, but final one, I think is the most important one. They have this requirement on-site access to mass transit, OK? We probably know, not quite so. So I would say it's very important for Los Angeles to be a successful future city to build more mass transit, OK? All right, so conclusion, all right. So with the rise of online retail, the brick and mortar retail industry has been hobbled over the past decade, and the disruptive force will continue in the future. Retail sectors have seen different impacts by online shopping. Department stores and electronic stores are two biggest losers. And super centers have been resilient. And grocery stores' growth remains steady so far. All right. A metro with high economic growth will see robust retail growth. A metro with a larger size of the tourist industry will see a higher retail growth when the, uh, retail, uh, when the tourist industry is growing. Okay, and finally, so Amazon's HQ2 requirements shed light on what a successful city um, in the future will need. Number one, size. Number two, pro-business. Number three, human capital. Number four, quality of life. Number five, affordable housing. And finally, transportation infrastructure, in particular, mass transit. All right. So thank you very much.